ಹಿಡ ನನಗೆ celebrating uh, Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all of you out there. This is Garifuna Music on Talk with DJ Labuga. Hey, Motea. about the fathers when tonight listen to the music I ask God to guide my way cause I know I go astray when I pray every day I ask God to guide my way to a good the body now said I may no move before when I remember we don't know but I can't let me know Wow. 
Welcome to Garifuna Music and Talk with DJ Labuga. We present our weekly radio show every Wednesday from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. We have interviews from Aurelio Martinez to Consigo, Gado Nunez, Gloria Osiris, Lord Augustin, Garifuna Music and Talk with DJ Labuga brings them all to you on our weekly radio show. Listen live on your home computer, smartphone, iPad, and notebook. Every Wednesday, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook through Ronnie Figueroa. Also on TuneIn, if you don't have the application downloaded for free. Welcome to Garifuna Music and Talk with DJ La Buga. Who was under the air? Follow up on the 
Ladies and gentlemen, we have a very special show tonight. We have Yolanda Sabio in the house. We're also celebrating Father's Day tonight. It is Father's Day in Central America, the 17th of June. Feliz Dia del Padre. Buiti Luweyuri. Ugu Chili. Ya motia. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do the radio ID. We are welcoming Radio Centroamérica at this point. Bienvenido para toda nuestra gente linda de Radio Centroamérica que ya se unió a nosotros ahorita a las 7 de la noche. Así de que bienvenidos. Welcome tonight, New York, Los Angeles. Y un saludo muy cordial para los colombianos que le están ganando a Brasil. Yes. Colombia is up one goal to zero against the Brazilian team. Que motea. Wabina ha. Wafedu ha. Welcome to Garifuna Music and Talk with DJ Labuga. We are live from the studios in Long Beach through RadioCentroamerica.com and LMBRoots.com Radio in New York. Every Wednesday from 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We bring to you the best of recording artists, musicians, producers, and musical directors behind Garifuna Music. So welcome to Garifuna Music and Talk with DJ Labuga and enjoy my show tonight. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Yolanda Savio, a very special guest of our show tonight. So let's hear. Yolanda Savio is a Garifuna woman born in Puerto Cortes, Honduras. She was raised in New York City, having immigrated to the States at the, a very young age. She has a bachelor's degree from a prestigious Vassar College and a Master's of Science in biling Bilingual Education from Long Island University. She speaks Spanish and English, but sadly to say, she says, of course, does not speak Garifuna. Yolanda relocated from New York City to Los Angeles in 2012 to be with her immediate family, which consists of her adult daughter, son-in-law, and two young grandsons. Yolanda successfully transitioned from a career in human resources to one in financial services. She's currently transitioned from, she's, she's currently working for the number one insurance and financial services firm called New York Life Insurance Company. And it is a registered representative there. Having earned both the Series 6 to 63 securities licenses as an ambassador for both Latino In African American market units, she's always on the lookout for smart and ambitious people to join the fastest growing office within New York Life in the Glendale, California office, of course. As Yolanda wants to specifically reach out to the Garifuna and the Latino community today, she will share with us the type of person that she is looking for and answers to some of the questions you might have about the position. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to welcome Miss Yolanda Sabio right after this song. This is Garifuna Music and Talk with DJ Labuga to Radio Central America in Los Angeles and LMB Roots in New York. Happy Father's Day to all of you fathers. Oh, Papa, Papa, no Gucci, Papa, 
of the late Andy Palacio Baba Noguchi Okay ladies and gentlemen it is time for Miss Yolanda Sabio good evening Miss Yolanda Sabio and welcome to Garifuna Music and Talk with DJ Labuga I thank you for accepting our invitation to interview with us and to find out more about who you are and what you do How are you All right. Uh, let me let me fix the sound. It sounds too low. One more time, please. Can you um, say hello to us while I fix the sound? Sure, sure. Again, good evening, everyone. Good evening, Tony. And good evening. I'm very happy to be here this evening and to talk with you and perhaps answer some questions. Excellent. Now we have perfect sound. Yes. All right. Let's get started. Right. First of all, I want to welcome uh, you and all of our listeners. Uh, to Garifuna Music and Talk with DJ Labuga. We have a large audience in Los Angeles through www.radiocentralamerica.com and also through the East Coast in uh, through lmbroots.com radio. That's one of our favorite stations in the East Coast in New York and where the largest Garifuna population lives. And of course, uh, right here in Los Angeles, we have a combination of Latino and the Garifuna population, which is very rich. It's Central American community, very rich in culture. So let us welcome you and let us get started. How about no, question number one? <laughs> Let's start at the beginning. I understand that you came to the United States at a very young age. What do you most remember about your childhood as a Garifuna young lady? That's a really good question. Um, what I most remember 
was that I was different. And I put that in quotes. And um, I say that because I was different from most of my friends, both black and white. Uh, outside of the home, I heard English. But inside my home, I heard Spanish or Garifuna. I happened to spend many summers in Honduras visiting my birthplace, Puerto Cortes, and getting to know both sides of my family. The things I remember are things like using the outhouse in Punta Gorda, Honduras, my father's birthplace, uh, having dinner uh, cooked outside in the outside stove, seeing my cousin Nahil ring a chicken's neck, and then we would have chicken soup, feet and all, <laughs> later on for dinner. Wow. And my grandmother. <laughs> yeah, that's vivid, vivid memories. Um, and another memory that I have is um, visiting Punta Gorda, Honduras, taking a lancha from La Ceiba. And um, at that time, trains weren't, you know, there weren't the roads, they didn't have roads in, in Punta Gorda. So we would have to take really walk from Cockton Hall to Punta Gorda. And I remember my cousin Rafael Castro meeting us there in Coxon Hall and walking in pitch blackness at night after rain to the other side of the island that, because that's where the Garifuna people lived. So those are the kinds of memories that I have. And I, say, I started out saying different because unlike many of my black American friends who went down south for the summer, I went to Honduras. And I loved <laughs> wow. it. Beautiful. What has remained, yeah, what has remained with me is my love for my people, my, our food, our music, our dance. And so even though I grew up in the States, my core is who I am. I am a Garifuna woman. Wow, that is beautiful. You sound like a proud Garifuna woman and the memories that you were talking about is it's just like reliving those moments uh, I could hear it in your voice that uh, momentum that you captured that will never go away especially when you said uh, that pitch darkness you know uh, walking from one end of the town to another and, and I know what that feels like <laughs> beautiful <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, yeah. And today, um, um, let's let's take a little minute to salute all of our fathers there. We uh, because we're celebrating Father's Day in Latin America tonight, and today actually the seventeenth of June. So, um, do you want to take a minute and acknowledge all of our wonderful parents, uh, fathers that is, uh, who are tuning tonight, listening to Garifuna music and talk with DJ Labuga, and listening to Miss Yolanda Savio. Absolutely, and you know, it's interesting because I want to talk a little bit about my father who's no longer here, but I want to just say happy Father's Day to all of, you know, the men out there, whether you are a natural father or not, because, you know, there are, there are so many ways that you can be a, a father to children, so many ways that you can be a mother to children. So again, my, my love and my greetings go out to all the, uh, the men listening tonight. Well, beautiful. Yes. Well, tell us about your father and your parents as a whole. Okay, great, great. Well, you know, I believe, I don't want to say for sure, but I believe that my parents were one of the first Garifuna families in New York City uh, coming to the U.S. in the early 50s. So I'm a product of the Sabio family, my father's side, which also includes the Castro lineage, and the Nunez family on my mother's side. And as you know, many people know Sabio means wise in yes. Spanish. Yes, yes indeed. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I would say we embody that. Um, I come from a family of highly educated people, proud, and it was my father who mostly exemplified that for me. He, he was a merchant marine. He got to travel all over the world. And he shared with me some of the things he saw in various parts of the world. And I think that's where I get my love for travel. I've, you know, I've been to a few continents, and I love to travel. He was a very intelligent man with strong political views, which is thing, I think, again, I inherited because I have some strong political views. 
um, the Sabios, the Sabios in Honduras are known um, to be teachers, and that has expanded to the U.S. with many of my sisters-in-law, my nieces, my nephews in the educational field. They, some of them are teachers, some of them are counselors, you know, but they're in education. So that's something that um, is part of my, you know, my lineage, certainly from my father's side. Well, that is on my mother's side. Yes, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, and on my mother's side, uh, I'm a Nunez, and there you have um, entrepreneurial spirit. My great grandfather's family was part of the founders of the city of La Ceiba, Honduras. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. Um, he was uh, a man that many people came to borrow money from. So you might say he was like the bank. Right. A prestamista, they call it. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. My mother, uh, Olympia Nunez de Sabio, though she had very little formal schooling, she was a very driven woman with lofty goals and high expectations in all areas of life. And I would say that she fashioned what could be called back then a middle-class lifestyle for us in New York City. She, um, she went to night school to learn English, and we would always have to help her get it right. It, it makes me smile just to think of we used to have to correct her English. She, she learned how to drive even before my father did. And again, this is a guy from a woman way back in the you know, 60s, 70s. You know, she learned how to drive. She bought two homes. Um, so I had the privilege of growing up always in a single-family home. Wow, that's nice. Yeah, yeah. And she was responsible for helping many family and friends come to the States and help them get settled financially before moving out on their own. When I was young, I always used to think of my house as a Honduras Honduran Underground Railroad. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Tell us why. Well, because there was always someone living with us. When they would come, <laughs> maybe my mother would sponsor them, or, you know, they came on their own, and, and they would stay with us until they got themselves together. And then, you know, they went on and got their own place. But it was always, always somebody in my house. And that didn't have to be a relative. It could have been a friend, but it was always somebody staying at our house. Wow, that is amazing. That is the Garifuna way to help one another to come up until you're on your feet and you're able to move on. Very nice. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Um, is there and, anything else? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. And my mother, um, unfortunately, transitioned at an early age. So she didn't get to realize all that she had planned for. She had planned to go back to Honduras and, and retire there, and that that did not happen because she, she passed away early in life. Um, but I would say I definitely get um, some traits from both my mother and my father. Excellent. I could see that in you being a businesswoman. I got it from a businesswoman who is very savvy and, 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 and of course, wise, just like your last name, Sabio. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Garifuna Music on Talk with DJ Labuga. We are live and direct with uh, Ms. Yolanda Sabio, who is a businesswoman and who is from the beautiful Puerto Cortez, Honduras, and uh, who comes from a very strong Garifuna family with uh, strong principles. And she is going to share good news with all of us who are interested in venturing into the financial world. So... Um, with that, um, I have my next question here. Tell us about your journey to America and your struggles trying to assimilate into this society. Okay. Um, as I said before, I was um, the different one. And, I, and again, I use the word different in, in quotes. Um, and that had it pros and cons. To, to white people, I was different because um, I wasn't born here. I spoke another language. So that made me a little bit more acceptable to them. To, to my black friends, um, I was different for the same reasons, but they just didn't know what box to put me in. <laughs> wow, I see. 
Yeah, and, and I've seen that same kind of struggle with many of my uh, nieces and nephews, you know, trying to figure out, okay, so, you know, where do I fit? What am I? I always knew who I was. I just, you know, I always knew who I was. So that was never a, a, an issue for me. Mm-hmm. But it seemed like it was an issue for other people. Oh, yes, definitely. Yes. And especially yeah. Yeah. especially being uh, a black woman, uh, because, you know, um, a lot of people would look at you and they say she's just, uh, uh, you know, an African-American, not knowing that you spoke Spanish. And, and then, of course, you had a, a different culture other than Spanish, you know, a culture that has so much richness in itself from uh, uh, dance, uh, music, uh, uh, f- uh, food, and, and, and so many traditions, and, and even religion, you know, so strong, uh, uh, a stronghold in, in, in the Garifuna community in all of the countries where Garifuna are living today, from Nicaragua to Honduras to Guatemala and Belize, and now in America, you know, those uh, customs have been brought uh, transported from Central America uh, to the United States, and you are a clear example of that. You're well rooted. Absolutely, absolutely. Yes. Okay, so um, who or what inspired you to get a higher education? I mean, I know a lot of us come here. We're happy with getting a high school diploma, maybe um, AA degree, uh, but to get a bachelor's degree and, and to get a master's degree back in those days was not very common. And you already said it that you have the pressure of your family who are well educated and who are teachers and things like that. So who was your inspiration? Uh, without a doubt, my father. My father. Um, remember my family, my father's family were the teachers. So it was expected that I would go to college, and I was the first one in my family to do so. When I was growing it was all about education. That's, that's, that's what they drilled in, in me. As long as I brought home good grades, I could do about anything. Wow. And I did. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that is so nice. That is so nice. And so what happened? Tell us, tell us more. My, my, well, my parents didn't know much about the different colleges, and, and I would say thank God for a good high school college counseling program and the sociopolitical climate of, of the country when I was applying for college, uh, that I had a choice to attend the best schools in the country. I really, I really did. And um, I chose Rafa College in Poughkeepsie, New York. I, I chose it because it was in New York. I didn't want to go too far. And it was a highly selective school. Wow. And there I met the most intelligent, fascinating men and women, many of them who remain close friends today and are in every walk of life that you can think of. So it was a, you know, it was um, education. Was, there was never any doubt in my mind that I was going to go to college. Right, right. Which what about a, master's degree? Uh, I mean, getting a bachelor's yeah. degree, I think. Uh-huh. Getting a master's degree well, I, is a big commitment, and, and, and I mean, were you married? What about the children? Did you have the time? How did you make the time to, to get vested into getting to, to obtain a master's degree? Well, I, I, was, um, I was a mother when I was, uh, got my master's, and I was um, working, and I went to school part time. I went to Long Island University in Brooklyn. And um, like many other women, you just do it. Just do what you have to do. It was um, something that I wanted to do, and that got me into teaching. I taught bilingual education in Brooklyn, New York. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, because my master's degree was in um, bilingual education. And it was something that, you know, you have to do. I, I, am, I don't see myself as any different from any... Women, we, women are warriors, oh, you yes. know, and especially oh, yes. that even our women are warriors because that's what we are. Yes, indeed. No, I totally agree with you. I have a good example right here with me, Miss Cheryl Norales. She's a warrior. I know. <laughs> I know she is. I know that. <laughs> yes, and so... So, you know, I, 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 did, I did what I had to do, um... I I was married at some point throughout that time, but that didn't last too. 
<laughs> okay. Um, yeah, but I, I had, um, I already, you know, had my daughter, who, the only child that I, that I had, um, she was born while I was going to school, getting my master's. Wow, excellent. And so now you get your master's degree. Can you share with us uh, your professional career working in corporate America? I mean, uh, you, you put yourself out there, so now it's time to, to pay the bills and, and get into, uh, into the workplace. Uh, so corporate America plays a very important role in your life. Tell us about that. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, after teaching, my first corporate job was uh, as a trainer. And what I did as a corporate trainer, what I did is I, I was able to tra transfer my skills in teaching children to uh, teaching and training adults. And I think, you know, I think when, if I were to give anybody advice, I would, in terms of career, I would say look at the skills that you have and what, how can you transfer them into something else that you want to do. And that's what I did. Um, I, I focused on management and leadership development in corporations. I worked for Accenture, which I know you are familiar with. Yes, yes, indeed. <laughs> I actually worked for AFS, <laughs> Accenture Federal, yes. Yes, yes. I worked in the organizational performance practice in the utilities sector. And um, I traveled all over the country for various projects that I was assigned to. And then um, I, again, transferred my skills into an HR generalist. Um, training is a part of HR, so I, I, I got into more um, uh, performance management and um, compensation and benefits. As a, um, and I worked for a newspaper and then a financial services company in Long Island. Oh, wow. So I could and, see, I, yeah. I could see And, and I, I, I like that. You know, it was very important working with um, the line, you know, the people who were interfacing with customers, and um, I really liked that. But working for a financial services company whose clients were banks and broker-dealers, it got hit by the recession of, in 2008. Oh, wow. And, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, and when you're working in a support function as opposed to a line function, then you can be cut. That's where that's where that's where companies look to trim the fat, so to speak. Wow. Yes. And yeah, and then I I was laid off, but you know, it was a blessing because it opened up options to me that hadn't been available before. Options like moving to Los Angeles where my daughter was getting ready to have her first child. Uh -huh. So I took advantage of that, and for a few years I traveled back and forth from New York to L.A., and then she had a second child. So I, then, I, then I said, you know what, I don't want to be 3,000 miles away from my only child and my grandchildren, so I chose to relocate to Los Angeles in 2012. Uh -huh. Wow. Yes, tell, tell, us, tell us about the relocation. Uh, I, I know that's a, uh, to me, uh, I don't know what I would do if I don't live in Los Angeles. This is my, my home base. Uh, and I've been to New York, I've been to other places, but I don't know if I could survive in any other environment other than my own here. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I figured now I've lived in two of the greatest cities in the country, maybe even the world, New York and L.A., so... Sky's the limit. Yes, indeed. I could see you are a very venturing woman. <laughs> I, think <that's, laughs> I think that's what you learn when you get exposed to um, good teachers uh, at the university level. Uh, I think they are able to polish you and get you out there ready for the world uh, and, and to make any move. And, and one of those things is your move into the financial services as a career. Tell us about why financial services for you. Okay, um, and I want to say not just financial services, but financial services sales. That's where I am now. I think it's a great place to be for the right person. It's not for everybody. Um, the type of environment that I'm in now, it's a production-based environment that basically, you know, you rely 
on your own effort. And it's, you know, you're not limited. The positives of that is that you're not limited by a salary that's dictated by someone else and not limited to those 1, 2, or 3% raises that you might get every year. Uh-huh. And um, that, that's why I think it's a great opportunity, and it was a great opportunity for me at this point in my life. Yes, continue. I am I am answering some of the questions from the listeners. They want to know who you are, what you do. So uh, there's a lot of people who are networking with me right now. They're actually, um, they social media. They want to know who you are, but I tell them they have to wait until you give us more information on what you do. So continue, please, okay. uh, Sabio. Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah, I, um, I work at New York Life. New York Life Insurance Company. I work in, um, in Glendale. And, um, you know, when people hear the word New York Life Insurance Company, they think, oh, you sell insurance. Yeah, that's it. Well, you know, um, that is certain, that is what I do. I do sell insurance. It's a good part of the work that I do, but it's, it's a, only a portion of someone's total portfolio, and that is what I do. I do financial planning. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, uh, uh, I, I believe that I work for the number one financial services company in the country, New York Life Insurance Company, and for the best office in that company, which is called the Greater Pasadena Office. Okay, yes. And, um, you know, as I said before, it's, 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 a, it's a career path that could be right for the right type of person. It's not for everyone. Um, but if you can make it work, and I can share with you some of the things that I've done to make it work, yes. then it can be a very lucrative career for you. Yes, and, and that takes me to the next question. What are the qualities of an ideal candidate for the financial services? Okay. Here, uh, we look for five must-haves. Number one, having a burning desire to be successful. And what do I mean by that? You have to be self-motivated. Um, you've got to have an internal passion for achievement. That's got to be your core. Number two, you have to have energy. And by that, I mean you've got to be willing to pay the price to, be, to live the life that you want. Because you, and you've got to work like your life, your life depends on it, because it does. Right. Mm. Um, you've got to have an, a lot of energy because you're going to always be going here and there. You know, it's, um, I am not um, young in age, but um, I have a lot of energy, so yes, I can do it. Is. Oh, I could a see A lot of people my age page, couldn't. Very active. <laughs> <laughs> um, number three, I said there were five things. Number three, mm-hmm. you have to have integrity. Uh, you have to have integrity because you deal with people and people will work with you because they trust you. And that comes, you know, from your character. We're in the character business. Number four, Mm -hmm. you have to be money motivated. And I say you've got to think big and do what's needed to meet what you need to make on a monthly basis. If all you want to make is, you know, and we we find that out. You know, we, 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 we do interviews, we do multiple interviews, we ask questions, we do psychological testing, all of that goes into us looking at you and saying, would you be a good fit for this type of business? Wow. Number five? Yes. Number five, you have to be mentally alert. And by that I mean you've got to be coachable. Um, the, my manager is many, many years younger than me, okay? But he's someone that I highly respect, I admire, and I can say I love him. I really do. Okay. He's a, he's a, he's a great, great manager. So you've got to be coachable. You have to have a sense of what's going on in the world, kind of, you know, current events, what's going on in sports, because you want to be able to build rapport with other people. So you kind of have to know what's going on and certainly have common sense and street smarts. Yes, indeed. So those are the five qualities that we look for. 
Can you run by the five qualities real quick without going into details so we could all remember? Let's review sure. the five qualities. Okay. Sure. Number one, have a burning desire to be successful. Number two, have energy. Okay. Number three, integrity. Number four, be money motivated. And number five, be mentally alert. Wow. Those are five easy ones. I think a lot of us, if not most of us who are listening to this show, have these qualities. Ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to Garifuna Music and Talk with DJ Labuga. We have on the line Miss Yolanda Sabio, who is a wonderful uh energetic guy from a woman born in Puerto Cortez, Honduras, raised in New York City, and she is into the financial services business, and she is sharing with us and inviting some of you who are interested in this type of business, in this type of industry, to join, and we're going to hear some more from Miss Yolanda Sabio. I just want to acknowledge our listeners in the East Coast through lmbroots.com radio. Welcome tonight, and also our listeners through www Radio Central America dot com in the west coast los angeles california welcome to all of you tonight and we are enjoying this wonderful interview with miss yolanda sabio who just gave us gave us the five qualities of a good candidate of an ideal candidate for the financial services career anything else you want to add to those qualities miss uh, yolanda sabio Say that again. Uh, anything else that you would like to add to those five qualities before I ask you the next question? Um, the only thing I would add is that, you know, I think if anybody is curious, you know, if anybody is um, um, searching for another opportunity, a better opportunity where, where, where there are no limits on how much you can make, and the impact you can have in your community, then I would say, check it out. Wow, that is nice. You I owe it. Mean, you owe it to. Yeah, you owe it to yourself to check it out because a lot of us don't know about positions like this. No, definitely, you are so right. Now, at the opening during the opening of the show, I um, mentioned that um, you were looking for Latino uh, or bilingual Spanish-speaking candidates in the area, right? Why are you looking for Latino or bilingual Spanish-speaking candidates tonight? Uh, I am looking for Latino bilingual Spanish-speaking candidates for the Los Angeles area because. Latinos make up 48.3% of the population in L.A. That's almost one out of two people is Latino. And when you walk the streets of L.A., you can see it. That's <laughs> yes. huge. Yes. And yes. a lot of that population is still not being served. This is an opportunity for people to impact somebody else's life, not only their current life, but their f generations to come. And one thing that I truly believe in is that we all are here to leave our mark, to leave a legacy. You know, no longer can we just expect the generations, the next generation to start all over again from scratch. We can do better. Oh, yes. And so... And so in this position, you have that opportunity to impact people's lives, to, to explain and share and educate them in a way that they can understand it. And a lot of people who, who speak Spanish, who, for whom that is their natural first language, they feel more comfortable when they're talking to someone who can speak their language. Oh, yes, definitely. Yo, yo comprendo eso. Es algo muy especial y yo creo que la gente se conecta rápidamente. Sí. Oh, sí. Yep. So, um, that, that is why I am looking um, uh, for people. And um, here at New York Life, we train you. We have a three-year intensive curriculum. That, so, you learn while you earn. Okay, so what is the culture of New York life? 
Well, I can answer that question specifically about the Greater Pasadena office, which which is the office that I work in in Glendale, and for who I'm looking for candidates. Um, it is high energy. It's motivating. It's supportive, with an air of friendly competition. In this office, we love to win, and we do. We do it often. Wow. We have we we are we are blessed to have. Uh, a managing partner who is, who is both, he's ambitious, but yet he's kind and fair. So it's, it's a great positive atmosphere, as long as you do what you got to do, because it is a production-based environment. You will have the support you need. Okay, so when you say production basis, uh, you got to perform, right? You got to be able to, to, you can't be stagnated. You have to move. You have to show that you right, produce. Right, right. You have, you, have, you have to perform. It is a sales environment. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so it's, it's, it's commission based. And there are some perks that come along with that, that, you know, if someone was interested, I could go into it more deeply with them. But it is commission based. Excellent, excellent. So how can anyone or candidates who are interested in financial services get in touch with you? If somebody wants to ask you, hey, uh, Ms. Sabio, I'm interested. Can you please sit down with me and break it down and explain it to me? How can they get in touch with you? Absolutely. Um, they can call me at 818-662-5500. Um, Or they can email me at ysabio at ftfrankthomas dot New York Life or one word dot com. Excellent. Um, can you repeat the phone number one more time? We need to hear the phone number one more time. It's eight one eight six six two. Seven seven zero five. Oh, beautiful! Excellent. So, ladies and gentlemen, I made sure that I posted the phone number on uh, my posts on uh, Facebook page. I know it's a little bit redundant uh, the way I speak sometimes, but I want to make sure that you do get the picture. You do get the phone number eight one eight six six two seven seven zero five, and this is for Miss Yolanda Sabio, who is with New York Life now. For those of you interested in, in contacting Ms. Yolanda Sabio, um, you could do this after the interview or you could call her tomorrow all day. I'm sure she's in the office in business hours and um, I don't know uh, what your time is, uh, availability for tomorrow, Ms. Yolanda Sabio, but if anybody is interested in calling you, can they call on you between 8 and 5? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, great. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have posted the phone number on my Facebook page, Ronnie Figueroa. Uh, Facebook page, again, is Ronnie, R-O-N-Y Figueroa, F-I-G-U-E-R-O-A. And if you want to contact Miss Yolanda Sabio, drop uh, an email. The email is Sabio. And then... Yes. Go ahead. Can, can you repeat it one more uh, time, please? Mm -hmm. Sure. It's a Sabio at ft with like frank thomas uh -huh. dot new york life or one word dot com y sabio at ft dot new york life dot com Excellent, beautiful. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, you're listening to Garifuna Music and Talk with DJ Labuga. We're live and direct from the studios in Long Beach. We are connected through two wonderful radio stations in New York, lmbroots.com, and in Los Angeles, Radio Centro America. And we have on the line Miss Yolanda Sabio. Um, my next question to you would be, can you talk about your own experience in this industry, uh, please? Sure, sure. Um Remember, excuse me, remember, I came to L.A., and I only knew my daughter and two friends that I knew from college. And I entered a field that usually works best when you have what's called a warm market. You have already relationships in the city that you're in. I didn't have that. How I built my business was through networking, being involved in 
different organizations, being involved in my church. I taught Zumba as part of the Women's Health Healthy Living Ministry at my church. Wow. And Amazing. some of my some of my students became subsequently came became my clients. Okay? Wow. So and and then I started reaching out to family and friends in other states because I am licensed in other states besides California, so I can do business in other states. Excellent. Wow. I um I got my well in the in the in the two years that I've been here I became licensed in my series six and series sixty three. What that means is that I can sell securities, I can sell mutual funds, and I can sell them in the different states that I'm licensed in. Wow. So within my first full year, I, I made I achieved a major milestone in terms of a recognition that we have in my company. And I am now positioning myself to do it again as I transition into a management field to build my own team. And this was in a short period of time. Excellent. And okay. how, long, yeah. how long is, is that period of time that you're talking about? How long did you uh, accomplish this? In what, in how much time? Well, I, I, if this is 2015. I started changing so just a little bit over two years. Oh, wow. Excellent. Yeah, so that, that's been my experience in this industry. And again, I think the, the success that one has is one has to put themselves out there and, you know, go back to the, one of the first qual the qualities that I mentioned, have a burning desire to be successful. And if, and if you have that, then you'll do what it needs to be done. We tell you what to do, and you just got to do it. Right. And you'll yeah. see the results. You have to have self-determination. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what you did. If you need more information in regards to this wonderful business, uh, please do contact Miss Yolanda Sabio. The information is on our screen, and it is 818-662-7705. And this is your weekly radio show, Garifuna for the Music and Talk with DJ Labuga. Miss Yolanda Sabio, um, I know we could get into, like, uh, how much money do we need to invest, uh, um, this and that, but those are more um, detailed questions that could be answered individually as each person is interested in, in getting uh, into the company. I think you could break it down to them. Uh, that's something that I wouldn't ask, but can you give us your final thoughts and, and uh, invite uh, some of our listeners to, to call you, to contact you, so that they could explore this wonderful world of financial services? Sure. Um, one thing I do want to say is one of the, the prerequisites is that um, you, you have to pass a licensing test. You have to pass, you've got to get your California license to be able to sell. So that's one of the things that you, you would do initially. Okay? Um, mm -hmm. And the, my parting thoughts is that, as I said before, there's a huge need for bilingual Spanish um, for really anybody, but I'm focusing right now on bilingual Spanish people, okay? okay. Um, to do seminars, to teach people how they can positively impact their life, as I said before, and, and future generations' life. To teach people how to not outlive their money in retirement, to minimize the taxes they pay in retirement and maximize their current dollars to fund their college, their children's college education. Those are the concepts that we teach you and that you will go out and do in, in your business. So if this is something that, you know, is, is of interest to you, then I would implore you to give me a call. Let's have a conversation. I don't know if you're a right fit, but we've got to start it by talking. About, talking. Yes. Me getting to know you and you getting to know me and New York Life. Excellent. And Beautiful. so if that is something that's of interest to you, come on, let's talk. I don't want to be the only black Latina here, okay? So I need some <laughs> company. <laughs> Beautiful. We want to send a big shout out to Kenya Norberto, Ruth Molina, Helen Newton Arias, Janet Witi Sabio, listening also in Texas, Garifuna Empress, OG Young in Chicago. 
Uh, of course, uh, let's see, we got a lot of people tuning in tonight. Indira Castillo uh, here in Los Angeles, Ingrid Gamboa in uh, New York, I believe, uh, Francis Ely, uh, Tanya Duarte, Gloria Chacon, uh, that's the professor, uh, doctor uh, from Cal State Northridge. Thank you for listening. Also, Michael Flores listening in Belize, Belize City in Dangriga, actually, and um, many, many more people. Thank you so much for tuning in, and thank you, Ms. Yolanda Sabio, for spending some quality time with us. I hope that more and more Garifuna or Latino people People who are listening to this show uh, are able to get in touch with you and and reach out and try to get more information. Don't be afraid. Um, the the there is nothing to lose. You know, you could get more information and you could get uh, uh, in into this business. Do you need a degree? I don't think you need a degree or a bachelor's degree or a master's degree to get into this business. But um, it is open to anybody who is interested in, in, in getting into the financial services. Uh, isn't that right, Ms. Sabio? Absolutely. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Well, thank and you I so want to say, you know, it's my, it's my pleasure to be on the show tonight and, and to share with others. Um, I truly have a passion for helping people, I always have, and this is just an extension of, you know, of, of, what, of what my purpose is. Excellent. Thank you so much, and thank you for giving um, our radio station the opportunity, and our listeners, I would say, the opportunity to um, get educated, to learn a little bit about financial services. There is uh, a world out there to be discovered, and it is in the financial services industry. I think there is a lot of money to be made. If you are money-driven, like you said, hey, this is the opportunity for you uh, to start a, a new business, your own business, I believe, because you do earn your own licenses, and that makes you an entrepreneur. You're on your own, right? Absolutely, that is right. Yeah, uh, and it's commission based, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Again, the number to call if you're interested uh, in getting information, setting up maybe an in, uh, not an interview, but um, you know, a, a moment of time where you and Ms. Yolanda Sabi, Sabi can discuss whether you are a good candidate or not. Is eight one eight six six two seven seven zero five. Again, the number is eight one eight six six two. 7705. Así es que la invitación está también eh, abierta para todas las personas de habla hispana y en especial a toda la gente linda de Centroamérica, ¿verdad? Y también de México, que es una gente muy trabajadora, eh, toda nuestra gente linda de Latinoamérica para que puedan eh, involucrarse en este negocio que es de, de aseguranza y del mundo de finanzas. El nombre de nuestra invitada esta noche es la señora Yolanda Sabio, que es una mujer garífuna de Honduras que ha aventurado desde su tierra de nacimiento allá en Honduras hasta los Estados Unidos y ha logrado uh, educarse con un bachillerato eh, y también con una maestría eh, bilingüe. Y bueno, y ahora está en, en la industria de, de finanzas, ¿verdad? Entonces, eh, denle una llamadita, el número a llamar para platicar con mis Yolanda Sabio es área 818-662-7705, nuevamente 818-662-7705, para más información acerca de la compañía que se llama New York Life. Es una industria muy um, accesible, con mucho dinero para los interesados en ganar buen dinero. Y el nombre New York Life no quiere decir que la compañía está en Nueva York, está en todos los Estados Unidos. Eh, ¿Verdad, eh, señor Yolanda? Sí, sí, eso es cierto, sí. El, el headquarter está en Nueva York, pero estamos en, en cada estado de, los, de este país. Ajá. Eh, tal vez nos puede dar un poquito de información en español, eh, tal vez una presentación para que la gente de habla hispana, la gente que nos escucha a través de Radio Centroamérica y de lmbroots.com de Nueva York, pues eh, si están interesados que hagan una llamadita y puedan eh, indagar un poco más acerca de este negocio que se llama New York Life y usted como representante registrada 
eh, de esta organización, de esta compañía, pues tiene su propio negocio y pueden llamarle al 818-662-7705. Ella estará a la disposición para que usted le llame y pueda discutir eh, la oportunidad de trabajo y ganar buen dinero trabajando con una de las industrias líderes en finanzas y en aseguranza. Así es de que el número a llamar es 818-662-7705. Algo más que quiera agregar ahí, eh, Yolanda Sabio, para nuestra gente de habla hispana. No, yo solo quiero decir que, por favor, si, que, si quieren más información, me pueden llamar. Yo voy a tener tiempo para practicar con con cualquier persona para decir darle más información de esta carrera que hay mucha oportunidad. Así es, muchas gracias, Ms. Yolanda Sabio. Thank you so much for spending one hour with us. It was a wonderful interview. It was great information, and we are proud to have a garifuna of women like you. And tonight we are celebrating Father's Day, so we're going to be playing a lot of music that has that Father's uh, Day theme in it. So, thank you so much, and we'll see you next time. And thank you for spending some good thank quality time with us. Thank you and good night everyone. Have a fa happy Father's Day. Los hombres están escuchando and um, God bless everyone. Thank you so much. Feliz Día del Padre Familia. Gracias, Miss Yolanda Sabio. Ayo. Es un buen tipo, mi viejo. Que anda solo. Y esperando Tiene la tristeza larga De tanto venir andando Yo lo miro desde lejos Pero somos tan distintos Es que creció con el siglo Con tranvía y vino tinto Viejo mi querido viejo Ahora ya camina lerdo Como perdonando el viento